Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And, look, more lights in the workshop. Finally got round to getting them sorted out after the big move. Okay, um, this is a short video, um, really, to see and show you what's inside a TPS unit. Now, a TPS unit is a throttle positioning sensor, uh, and these are found on uh, pretty much all, well, in fact, all vehicles that have got fuel injection, and quite a few that haven't. They're even on the side of carburetors on a lot of motorcycles. Um, because to have a throttle position input signal, even into just an ignition system, can allow a CDI unit or an ECU to, to change the advance uh, of the ignition, depending on engine RPM and the load and that kind of thing. So these have been around for a while. Um, they have been quite problematic. I remember when I first started working for Yamaha, uh, back 2009 I think it was, um, the 450 race quads had TPS on the side of the uh, carburetors. And they would often fail uh, due to water ingress. And that was because um, originally they'd use a TPS unit that was uh, designed really for a car, put it on a quad bike, well of course quad bikes operate in much harsher environments than cars, people pressure wash the quad bikes on a regular basis, and moisture was getting inside the TPS and it was causing corrosion on the track, which therefore changed the resistance values, hence TPS junk, and you would run like a bag of shit, basically. Um, they're a lot better sealed these days. I have taken one apart in the past, one of the old Yamaha ones, which wasn't too hard to get into. This looks a bit more difficult, so I'm going to give it a go. I want to ideally show you what's inside. This one is the faulty one that came off that Chinese uh, 650 um, CF motor thing that we did uh, a few weeks ago. Um, hopefully it won't be too bad to get into. I want to have a look and see what the arm looks like, uh, because this has... I think being damaged due to shock when the bike was dropped while it was in its crate and I'm wondering if the arm has just bent slightly and that's why we were getting a different a very different resistance value or voltage value uh, when we were testing it so it'd be interesting to find out and it's also good for you guys to be able to see what's inside these units so that it helps it certainly will help my students to understand how these things work because they're just really a variable resistor Okay, so bear with me, we're going to dig our way in, there's going to be lots of editing I'm sure, but uh, fingers crossed we can make our way all the way inside without destroying everything so we can see how it actually works. Here we go. Okay, so you've, we've got essentially some sealant, some bonding agent that's around there, that's the shiny black stuff, and um, the unit would have been assembled and then that would have been dropped into place, because everywhere else it's pretty much a single uh, cast unit. So. Uh, we can see here that this is the actual twizzly bit in there, look, the bit that rotates, and attached to that will be the arm. And it'll all be dropped in from the top, and then the sealant will go on. So I suppose the only real way to go in is to see if we can scratch away all this sealant without stabbing ourselves too much. So I'll crack on with doing that. I'll dig all that out, there's no point in watching all of this. And... Uh, once all that's out of the way, hopefully we can lift that top piece out and be able to see what's inside. Here we go. Now obviously there are lots of different style TPS units out there on the market. This is just one of them. And in actual fact, there's a very new style that's coming out soon that doesn't have this kind of input. Um, in fact, the unit can be made where it's completely sealed and that's going to make them a lot more reliable because as, as soon as those resistance values start to change the TPS essentially goes out of calibration and uh, that leads to all sorts of running problems you know, cars will idle, they surge, there's all sorts of stuff going on so. so you can see now look, <clears throat> updates, we've got all of the sealant removed from around here just got this side here to get to get out and then hopefully we're going to be able to remove the centerpiece it wasn't anywhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be let's 
get uh, something that's even better at stabbing me with. Right. Okay. So there's heaps of videos covering TPS units and how, they, how to test them and the theory behind how they work, but I've not seen one where, and I've been looking quite hard, where somebody actually pulls one apart to have a look inside. Ooh, look at that, right. Okay, so very carefully then, just take that lid off. If it will come off. Should do. Right, here we go. Easy. Okay, <clears throat> torch time. There we go, that might help. Okay, you can see just down there the two little arms. Those are the contact points. And then around the outside, we've got this track. And that's the variable resistor. So the more of that track that's included in the circuit, the higher the resistance. And the less of the track, the less resistance. So you can see here that we've got, as regards a circuit, we must have... Oh, I see what they've done. Okay. So as I turn that... At the moment, the throttle is in um, the idle position. So the output voltage will be between 0.4 and 0.7 of a volt in that position, which will be the highest resistance. And then as that, um, as that arm is turned, put your finger there, don't want the spring to fly out, there we go, um, it reduces the amount of that track that's in the circuit, and the voltage then climbs. And you can see those little fingers going around like that and making contact. So let's pull it apart a bit further. I might even be able to put this one back together by the looks of it. We'll have to wait and see. And we'll just flick that little spring off so we can get rid of that. Okay, that's the spring out. And now we should be able to lift out the arm. We can have a look at that. Hopefully. We can just push it through with that. Maybe it just clicks into, oh, it probably clicks into place. Yeah. You see there, look, there's a little little ledge just there. So we're going to have to push these fingers in. Maybe a flat screwdriver will do that. Just get those to go in slightly so we can push it through. There we go. Right. So, <clears throat> oh, there's the seal. Okay, so it's got a little o ring seal on it. And. You can see the circuit now, so the current is flowing down one of the tracks and it's going across, it's using this as a bridge and it's going back down the other circuit. So the track itself, we've got a circuit where it comes in on one of the pins, uh, whichever one it is, I can't tell from here. I think that that pin there is this top track, so it comes in on this pin and then that's that track there, look, it goes all the way around and then the second pin is that track there because the second pin is the output signal so essentially the the circuit is it comes in on this pin which is your five volts in and it goes around that circuit there and then at some point these little fingers bridge the two tracks together and then the circuit then the current then flows back down this track and out through the center pin pretty simple um, but why was it reading such a high voltage? Because it was giving us three and a half volts at in the idle position. Hmm. Odd. Okay, let's see if we can get the track out. I'm not sure if we can actually get that out or not without damaging it, but we'll we'll have a look. I don't really want to damage it. If I can help it, there we go. Look. Okay. Right. So this is the track, the actual resistor coming out now. Now, I'm not sure if we can take it much further out than that without damaging it, because we've obviously got contacts that run down to here. Maybe it's just going to lift out, I don't know how. I think it's just, it's just sandwiched between those two, so it should just come out. He says. With complete faith. There we go, look. 
Wow. Okay. <clears throat> so there's your track. We've got a third one down the bottom, look. Okay. And where's it gone? There we are, look. It's just to flatten the whole thing out for you so you can see it clearly. Essentially, we've got uh, the current coming in on that pin. And it goes along here. And then the output circuit is this one, which goes to the center pin. So the fingers of that sweeping arm that, that join the two tracks together, essentially create a bridge, run along there. And as that moves up and down, or you know, that, that, those two tracks, we're introducing more or less of the resistors. And each of these two tracks is a resistor. We're introducing more or less resistance to the circuit and that's going to affect the output voltage wow this this one's come together uh, come apart really well actually um, i can't do any more it's pretty much stripped that's all there is to it so why was it misreading i don't know everything looks as it should do but i am told that these things are very very susceptible to damage as a result of shock so maybe something on that track has got damaged or maybe the pressure that one of these fingers or the fingers apply to the track that's probably more likely what it is actually that the contact of those fingers onto the track has become reduced there's not as, as much force pushing them against the track so that's going to create additional resistance maybe I don't know, it's hard to tell but that's how this particular TPS and they all sort of work in a similar way I remember the Yamaha one that I pulled apart the track wasn't around the outside it was flat it was like a flat disc with the little tracks on and it had a finger that basically you know ran around that track like that and introduced more or less of the resistor so pretty good to see inside and um, interesting so there you go who would have thought how easy it was to get into wish I'd done that before um, so essentially inside what components do we have just as a recap well, we have the track or the pair of tracks which is that bit there look uh, these things are not repairable I'm not pulling it apart to try and fix it you know this is just really to, as a um, explanation as to what's inside these things so that's the back of the track those are the two contact strips and that there is the the two little arms now of course they they just act as a join because it's all one piece of metal and those two little um, brushes almost, you could call them, run up and down those tracks and introduce more or less of the resistor. And that track is the resistor into the circuit. And the more resistor, the more of the track in the circuit, then the lower the output voltage uh, and the less of the track in the circuit, the higher output voltage. Pretty simple, actually, how it works. Um, but yeah, that's what's actually got damaged on it i can't see anything obvious um i just know that i have been told these things are extremely temperamental they don't like to be even dropped so that's probably why it's failed but the new one that they supplied was a totally different design made by delota the new one whereas this one's looks like an italian yeah an italian brand there look so they've obviously stopped buying from these guys because they're a bit temperamental Italians are not great at electrics, we know that. Sorry, Italians. It's a global video, isn't it? Okay, so now that we've looked at it, uh, let me see if I can put it all back together again, because I like to keep things all together. And then uh, maybe I can use it in class when my students can pull it apart and see if they can put it back together again. Um, it's pretty simple. So here goes. Right. Let's see if we get this thing back together. Um, I've pulled that out. That's just a little spring clip. So if I put the track back in first it just sits around there I've been trying for ages to get this back in but things just keep jumping out so I just want to reassemble it just for keep all the bits together really and somebody in a factory somewhere will be able to do this really quickly obviously not me why is that not going down there we go Drop that in. Don't think I'm designed to work in factories somehow. Let's go. Let's get the clip back in now. Okay, so this clip, 
That's cool. That was glued in, by the way. That's what that, That's why it's taking some of the plastic out. That fits down there, and that's what provides the pressure to hold that uh, that um, the track in place on the contacts. So. There we go. Right, track is back in. Now just the little arm. So the arm just drops in there, like that. Okay, cool. So the arm now, there you go. So the arm's now running around the track again. And all that's left to do now is Mr. Spring. Okay, so Mr. Spring goes down there like that. And he went he went in there, if I remember rightly. So if we just pull that round, that should just sit. Damn you. Okay. So close. Big fingers don't work with this kind of thing. There we go. Right. So if it all goes to plan now, put my finger over there just to make sure the spring doesn't pop out. There you go, look. So that's now reassembled. Never going to work, but that's basically everything back together again. And we can just stick the cap back on. Now we have a little quadrant there that holds the spring in place. So that's got to go over there. Done. Scrap. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. It was really just an insight to show you what's inside a TPS unit um, and how it changes the output voltage based on the position of the the throttle which is essentially the position of this little arm you know within that component its angular position uh, my name is andy young i'm one of the automotive lecturers um, at unitech in auckland new zealand uh, if you have any questions or comments then please do leave them down the bottom um, if you subscribe to the channel which i hope you do um, then you'll receive notifications as and when new videos get posted up onto the channel and there's usually three or four at least every week um, and for those that are following the channel already hey thank you very much um, the channel is growing really quickly um, you know the number of views the number of hits the number of minutes watched every month um, far out see uh, you know outweighs what i expect it to to be and it's about doubling every month so really really impressed with that thank you very much it's a bit of a pat on the back for me for all the hard work that i put in okay um well thanks for watching cheers over and out